This is me, and this is my new hardcore survival world. In this video, I want to attempt to survive 100 Minecraft days in a hardcore survival. One day in Minecraft is 20 minutes real life time, which means I'm going to need to survive 33 hours of real time in this Minecraft world. Remember, this is hardcore. One mistake and it's all gone. Will I do it though? We'll have to wait and see. They are three things that I want to achieve in these first 100 days. First one being to defeat the Ender Dragon. Complete classic one, but the sooner I get this one done, the better. The second one is to upgrade all my tools and armor to Neverwrite. This will be a real challenge, but hopefully using the chunk border mining method, we should be able to achieve this before day 100 hits. And finally, to defeat the Wither, the second boss of Minecraft. This one's going to be tough, so I'm going to need to prepare a lot for this fight. Before we begin, only a small percentage of you that watch my videos are subscribed to my channel, so if you could do me a huge favor please subscribe it's completely free and you can always change your mind later if you need to are you ready let the hundred days begin so it was the start of day one and i began chopping a tree it wasn't the most exciting thing but it was the only thing i could do at this point i knew crafting the essential tools i needed to start my journey off was the right thing to do then i spot a desert in the distance i begin to sail out to see what i can find In the desert, I was able to find a small ravine with some useful resources. I was able to collect the coal, but needed to upgrade my pickaxe to stone if I wanted the iron, so that's what I did. Some of the iron was out of reach, so I only got what I could and got out of there. I needed food, and I needed it fast. In a lake nearby, I spot some fish. This was my only and best option because no other animals were in sight. Later that day, I spotted some cows. I took advantage of this and got more food. You can never have too much in a hardcore world. I also spotted some sheep. This was extremely useful. I needed a bed if I wanted to survive the night. And with that being said, day one is officially over. As soon as I wake up, I spot some pigs. The more food that I could get early on, the better. Then, in a nearby swamp, I spotted some sugarcane. I've been needing to farm these later on for making paper and crafting books. Then, the rest of day two pretty much consisted of me cooking my food in a furnace and then watching the sunset. Day three, I decided it was time to upgrade all my tools to stone, just to make things more efficient. Later that day, I spotted an abandoned nether portal, so I go over to investigate. The loot really wasn't amazing, but it was better than the things I already had, so I took them. The rest of day 3 consisted of me gathering resources that were visible on the stone mountains. I used this as an opportunity to stock up on some coal. Day 4. I continued to collect as much coal as possible. It's much better to have more than I need than it is to be needing more. But then, something unexpected happens. I spot campfires in the distance. It's a village. I had to go over and investigate and see what I could find. The loot in the chest was pretty good. Iron ingots, gold ingots, and even an iron sword. The next chest that I find wasn't so good, but it was at this moment I realised I had little to no space at all, so I decided to take over this village house and call it my home for a little while. It was time to cook all my food and ores and prepare to go mining. So that's what I did. I decided to build down to diamond level to see if I could get my hands on any early diamonds. After mining for a little while, I decided to turn back and get some rest. But then, I heard something. Lava. I decided to mine in the direction that I could hear it. And there it was. My first cave discovered. I spent the rest of day 4 mining for iron and other essentials. And then it was time to head home. Day 5 pretty much consisted of me gathering wood and upgrading all my tools to iron. Turns out I had enough iron to get myself a full set of armor. This was essential if I wanted to survive any longer. Day 6. I decided to craft a shield and go back to the depths of the caves to get some more iron and coal. But then, I spot my first enemy. In fact, to my surprise, it was three of them. I was in trouble. Thankfully, I crafted a shield beforehand because otherwise I would have been toast. Losing five and a half hearts on my first encounter was pretty terrifying, but I came out on top in the end. I notice a mineshaft right next to me. I enter the mineshaft in hopes of finding some good loot. But then, I notice something. A spider spawner. I knew if I got bitten by one of these things, it could be fatal. So I decided to keep my distance and prepare taking it on. I slowly approach the spawner, slashing my way through the cobweb surrounding it. And then, the cave spider strikes. I was poisoned, 
but not for long. Luckily for me, it didn't do too much damage, so I went back to the spawner to finish the job. It's day 7. I continue exploring the mineshaft collecting some goods, but then out of nowhere, another cave spider strikes me through the floor. I locate another spawner which I had to deal with very carefully. And right next door to that spawner, guess what? Another one. The spawner was right in front of me, but before I could destroy it, a cave spider climbs through the gap to attack me. I dealt with this one pretty easily, but another one appeared. I heard a lot of spiders, so I had to be very careful when taking this one out, or my road to 100 days could have ended right here. It's now day 8, still exploring the mineshaft. I come across another spider spawner, but before any of them could attack me, I destroyed it instantly. Just around the corner, another spider spawner. I notice a creeper and another mob stuck in the webs, so I grab my flint and steel and light the creeper up. This allowed me to gain easy entry to the spawner. Right around the corner from that, guess what? Another spawner. I'm shocked with how many of these we've come across, but destroying them is becoming easier each time. Day 9, I find a lava pool. This is an opportunity for me to clear my inventory. And, going off my own Minecraft experience, diamonds are more likely surrounding lava pools, so I decided to strip mine next to it. It seems that I chose the right direction, because very quickly, there it is, my first diamonds. As you can imagine, I was stunned, soaking up the sight of the diamond ore like I've never seen them before. Thankfully, there was 8 of them, so I was very happy with the amount that I got. I continued to strip mine, and very quickly come across some more diamonds. I could not have been any happier. It's now day 10. I decide to slowly make my way out, but then, I come across something. A zombie spawner. The loot was okay, I came across my first music disc of this world which was pretty cool. But after that, I decide it was time to adventure home. I sort out my inventory, getting my ore smelting. I feel complete at this point. I think it was time to move out. I wanted to find somewhere that had a good scenery, and then I came across this. Across the ocean, I see lava pouring out of the mountains. I loved this view and decided to settle here. So from the end of day 10 all the way up to day 15, I decided to flatten the area and do some landscaping. This is what I now call home. <laughs> camp and started farming sugarcane and even some wheat. For the rest of day 15, I collected more wood and lit up my area as I wanted to limit my interaction with enemies. Oh, and not to mention, I built a nether portal and lit it. It's now day 16. Day 18, I go out to find some cows. I knew that if I wanted to enchant, I'd need the leather, and to survive longer, I would need more food. A cow farm was a perfect opportunity for this. I trapped them in, and built them a basic home. Then I started breeding the cows. Then I realised, I had nowhere to call home yet, and that's when construction began on an underground base. I figured having a secure underground base would be better as I'd be more secure away from the dangers of the night. Day 21, I go exploring, getting plenty of food and leather at every opportunity. And then, I came across something, another broken nether portal. The loot wasn't good, but I took what I could anyway. My adventure started to get pretty boring, but then, I spot something in the distance, a village. I noticed it had hay bales which would be perfect for breeding the cows back home. Then, I continue my adventure, I notice a desert. This would be perfect later down the line as I'd want mass amounts of sand. But then in the distance, I notice a temple. Filled with excitement, I rush over to go check it out. Things got much better. A village right next to the desert temple. Surely not. 
but there it was. The loot from the Desert Temple wasn't anything spectacular, but I took what my inventory could hold. After close inspection of the village, it had nothing of use, but then I noticed the sun was starting to set. I needed to get back home before the creatures of the night came out to play. Day 23, I decided to enchant my pickaxe. Unfortunately, I didn't get fortune, but they were good enchantments either way. I made more chests outside to clear my inventory, and it was time to make myself some diamond armor. I knew if I wanted to survive any longer, this would be crucial to have. I got pretty good enchantments on my helmet, but not so much on the boots. It was better than nothing though, so I kept them. The next day, I decided it was time to enter the nether. I wanted to spend as much time as possible mining quartz and going for XP, so that's what I did. But not too far from the portal, I noticed something. A nether fortress. This was perfect, as I needed blaze rods for brewing potions, something I desperately needed for the ender dragon fight. Day 25, I get some nether wart from the fortress. I'm going to be needing this if I want to start brewing potions. I throw all my gold at a piglin, in hopes it will give me some pearls, and honestly, the trades were pretty bad. I'd have been much better off killing endermen, but with that comes huge risk. Back at home, I decided to craft a diamond pickaxe and a diamond sword, and I wanted to try and get some better enchantments. Day 26, I dive back into the nether to get some more XP and collect some glowstone. I'd been needing this to light up my base. But then, I come across the scariest looking thing I've seen yet. A Bastion Remnant. I knew I wasn't ready to take this on yet, so I traded what gold I had left with a piglin to test my luck. Day 27. I started on my base. First thing I did was move the enchantment room. Somehow a creeper gets inside. That sends alarm bells ringing. I need lighting and I needed it fast. Then I decided to make a storage room. I'd be needing this if I wanted to get and stay organised. Day 28 and 29 I pretty much spent organising my storage and sorting my chests out. And day 30, I dig a mine straight down to diamond level. Between days 31 and 34, I spent in the nether, mining for quartz, getting as much XP as I could. Then day 35, I spent trying to get better enchantments, and I combined two enchanted swords to get a very good sword in return. Day 36, I went back into the nether to test my luck with a piglin and trade some more gold. Day 37, I decided to head back home. I wanted to work more on my base before I fight the ender dragon, so that's what I did. Day 38, I created a room dedicated to smelting and brewing potions. I also made an area for growing nether wart. And by day 39, ender dragon preparation was well underway. I needed to brew potions of slow falling, regeneration and strength if I wanted to increase my chances of beating the ender dragon. I wanted to practice with a bow and arrow ready for the ender dragon, so I decided to take on the Bastion Remnant. I needed to take out the piglin brutes from a distance. If they got close to me, it could have been all over in a matter of seconds. A piglin brute rushes over to me at the bridge. I jump instantly, but knew I had to keep my composure if I wanted to raid the Bastion and leave unharmed. Luckily for me, I was able to grab gold blocks from the piglin statue. This was perfect because I lost a lot of gold from trading. I felt in control once again. But then, Something happens. A gas starts firing fireballs at me. I needed to get the gold without the gas destroying it. We had a serious problem. We ran out of arrows. I was left with no choice but to hit the fireballs back at him. I struggled to keep my composure. Luckily for me, I had the fawns enchantment on my chest plate, so any damage that he did to me, he also did to himself. Not long after I realized that, the battle was over. I could peacefully collect the gold and return home. It's the end of day 39. Ender dragon preparation is complete. I knew I'd be heading to the stronghold tomorrow, so it's time to get a good night's rest. This is it, day 40, the day of the ender dragon fight. I say goodbye to my base and my cows because it may be the last time I ever see this again. After being on the hunt for the stronghold for some time, I throw my eye of ender and it disappears. I look around all confused with no sight of the eye of ender that I just threw, but then completely out of nowhere, it comes up from the ground beside me. This is it, we found the stronghold. So I dig straight down, and there it was. We have reached the stronghold. It took me a while to find the portal room, but when I found it, the nerves and excitement started to hit me. I place the eyes of Ender in the portal and drink my potions ready for the fight. Here we go, the moment I've been waiting for. I enter the portal, there is no turning back now. It's either I defeat the Ender Dragon or I lose everything I've worked for so far. At first, my aim was a bit shaky, but after taking out all of the end crystals, I became more and more confident and felt unstoppable. 
The time has now come. With all the end crystals being destroyed, it's now just me against the ender dragon. The ender dragon comes down for the first time, but not for long. I deal a lot of damage at this point. I knew if I kept this up, the next time it flies down is where it ends. I tried to deal as much damage as possible with my Boron Arrow, but its health wasn't going down very much. Then, before I knew it, it flies down to the middle again. This is my chance. I get right behind the dragon and start hitting the tail. There it was. The fight was over. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was beyond excited that I made it out alive, not to mention the amount of XP that I received as a reward. We have done it. Maybe I will get to see my base and cows again after all. I notice a portal that leads to the end islands, so before heading home, there was one last thing I wanted to achieve. I wanted to raid an end city, get the elytra wings, and get some shulker shells. As soon as I went through the portal, I instantly spotted an end city. I was pretty gutted though that this one didn't have an end ship, but I decided to loot it anyway. I desperately wanted the elytra wings, so after looting this end city, I decided to explore some more. And luckily for me, not too far from where I was, and boom, the end ship appears right in front of my own eyes. I was delighted. I decided to tower up to the end ship and gain entry. I turn around, and there it is. A shulker defending what I came all this way for, the elytra wings. The chest had amazing loot as well, which was a bonus. After that, I decided to raid the end city of all its loot and try to gather as many shulker shells as possible. If there's one thing I wanted from this journey more than the elytra wings, it would be mass amounts of shulker boxes. I know that this would help me massively with storage and gathering materials for big projects. As soon as I got home, I made some sugar boxes. With the shells that I collected, I was able to craft 8 of these. As you can imagine, I was very happy with that after one trip to the end. I will go back at some point and try and get some more, but for now this was more than enough. I combined an efficiency 5 pickaxe I found in the end city onto my pickaxe. So now, I have the best pickaxe enchantments I could ask for. And I've now got looting free on my sword now as well, which is an even bigger bonus. It's now day 42. I decided to upgrade my diamond mine with stairs so I could get up quicker and spent the rest of the day gathering resources. Day 43 was spent organising my storage room and that's what I really did all day. Day 44, I decided to go to the local village to trade some sticks for emeralds. I needed a name tag for a future project that I was planning. This took quite a while to get the emeralds that I needed but I got the name tag in the end. Day 45, I went hunting for sheep. I needed a lot of wool for this project as I needed carpets. Around 2 stacks of carpets should be enough. Then, I decided it was time to bring sheep back to my home but I could only find one at the time, so the rest of the day was spent walking back home with a sheep. Day 47, I went out looking for another sheep. I eventually found one. I brought it back home to start breeding my sheep, which would make getting wool a lot easier. Then I decided to prepare the name tag. Can you tell what project I'm working on just by the name? Let me know in the comments if you know what it is. I also needed some more ender pearls, so I decided to dive straight back into the nether to do some more trading. For the rest of day 47 and 48, I spent in the nether. I remembered I left some loot at the bastion, so I decided to collect that while I was here. Day 49 was the big day, the project build. I dived straight into the end to get some work on it. If you haven't guessed yet, we're building an enderman farm, the ultimate XP farm which I'll be needing to mend all my tools and armour. When I get mended on everything of course. It did take a couple of days to build this and after some testing, it was done. I was very happy with the amount of XP this thing produced. Once it was finished, I went home and I decided it was time I was in need for a big adventure. So I went exploring. Between days 52 and 58, I spent exploring the rest of my seed. I came across a winter biome with a village which had nothing in it besides villagers. While I was here, I also came across an igloo. This was perfect because I could easily get the zombie doctor achievement. I knew at some point I'd want to complete all achievements. So to save me coming back, I completed it while I was here. Then I realized something. While I was away from home, I wanted to find a jungle. I wanted jungle saplings so I could grow the jungle trees back at home. I wanted a bamboo farm so I could make scaffolding. I had farmed as much jungle wood as possible and collected as many saplings as I could. I also collected cocoa beans and melons so I could farm these as well. With all of that done, I decided to look further into the jungle to see if I could spot a jungle temple. 
Later in the adventure, I finally come across my first temple. It was time to check it out. The loot wasn't too great, but I was quick to realize I wanted the sticky pistons since I didn't have any slime yet. I do have a base extension in mind which would require these later. I also checked my shulker boxes to see what storage I had. I made some shears and collected some vines while I was here. After adventuring through the night, I spot something in a lake nearby. Another jungle temple. The loot was okay, I even got some diamond horse armor which was nice, but I needed to sleep. It was raining, I could hear loads of mobs, so I decided to break my way into a tree and rest there. The next morning I adventure out a little further. A third jungle temple. I was amazed with how many of these I'm finding. I decided to loot it quickly and get out of there. But then, I noticed something. We had a very serious problem. We are now down to four shulker boxes when I had five in my inventory. I have left one somewhere, and with the size of the jungle, I thought I'd never see it again. I go back to that jungle temple to see if it was there, and no sign of it. Then, I go back to the tree I stayed in. I wasn't sure if I placed it down by mistake. It took me a while to find the exact tree, but eventually, I spotted the tree I stayed in, and no shulker box. But then, something hits me. I remembered the last time I saw the shulker boxes was when I placed them all down to check my storage. I definitely had five of them then, but I do not have five now. I needed to go back there and check it out. I do remember mining all five shulker boxes. I mustn't have picked one of them up. We had a race on our hat. I needed to find it before it despawned. Time was everything. I raced through the jungle to see if I can locate it. I didn't have a clue where I was, I was lost. I knew if I travelled back where I came from, I'd eventually see the first temple. And there it was. I knew roughly where to go from this temple, so I rushed over to where I placed the shulker boxes down, and long behold, it's right there in front of me. The last thing I wanted to see was it to despawn right in front of my own eyes, so I rushed over to pick it up, and thankfully, it was saved. After that, I just wanted to go home before this could get any worse, so I started to make my way back. It's the end of day 58, and I finally make it home. I didn't want to do anything else but rest, so I got a good night's sleep and prepared for tomorrow. It's now day 59. I spent most of this day sorting out my storage from the shulker boxes, and then I decided to go and get some more XP, so I paid the Enderman farm a visit. I stayed there till it was about day 60. I travelled home and wanted to find a village that I hadn't already been to. Then, about 800 blocks north of my base, I spot a village. This was great, because now I can plan a villager trading hall move to my own base, with villagers I've never met before. So, I travelled back and got to work on my base extension idea, by wiring up some redstone in my enchantment room. Day 61, it was time to start on my new project, a villager trading hall, or more like a villager breeding area for my base. I wanted this lower down, because I knew I would need to mine to the village underground to transport the villagers home. This took me quite a few days to build, so the last thing I do on day 64 is install a security fence. This will stop the villagers from roaming around my base and keep them safe. It was now day 65. I go around to all the villagers to see what they can trade me for emeralds. Then, I spent the rest of the night trying to get a mending trade from one of the librarians. I had no luck this day, so before mobs came out to raid the village, I watched the sunset and got a good night's rest. The next day, I eventually got what I needed, a mending book trade. Between day 66 and 68, I spent trading with the villagers. I needed as many emeralds as possible, so I could get mending on my tools and armour. And now I had an XP farm, mending on all my things would have been essential. After I finished trading for emeralds, which was a good day or two, I was able to collect enough emeralds to buy some mending books. I was very happy with the amount that I bought from a villager, and I could not believe my own eyes when I realised. Eight mending books. I was very happy, so it was time to head home and equip mending on everything I could. And to start day 68 off, I started mining down to diamond level from the villagers home, ready to construct the rail tracks to bring them back safely. All of day 69 was spent mining underground, I knew the coordinates I needed to get to, and most of this day was just spent trying to get there underground. I started to mine up to the village, when I noticed something, I bumped into a mine shaft. I decided to go up and investigate. I noticed a minecart with a chest inside. I open it, and I could not believe my eyes. My very first notch apple. Do you understand how rare this thing is? I was completely blown away with this very lucky find. And to end day 69 off, I was ambushed. A baby zombie with an iron shovel. I wasn't able to attack it. I started shaking as my hearts depleted right in front of my eyes. Luckily for me, I took it out, with only two and a half hearts left to spare. I needed to heal and sleep before things got any worse. Day 70, I spent getting mending on the rest of my items and going to mend my tools and armour. Between day 71 right the way through to 74, I had one thing set on my mind. 
netherite. Now, this would be a real challenge, but after doing my research, the best way to get netherite without TNT or beds is to mine along the chunk borders in a 2x2 two two area. This was completely new to me, so for the next few days, this is all I did. I wanted to come out of the nether with full netherite armor and tools, so I didn't stop until I got what I came for. I was able to leave the nether with a whopping 49 pieces of ancient debris. I was so happy, but I wasn't sure if this was going to be enough to upgrade everything. Then, I crafted a smithing table and combined the netherite scraps with gold. 12 netherite ingots I got out of this. I knew I had enough to turn all my armor and tools into netherite. I felt complete. The rest of day 75, I spent all of my iron on rail tracks and began to lay them down for the villagers. I began to transport them to my base. It was day 76 and I had a problem. I wasn't able to transport the villagers all the way because the rails weren't powered rails, but luckily for me, I had a backup plan. I needed to get some coal and fast. I decided to try and use the furnace in a minecart to see if this would give me the power I needed to get them home. This was my first time ever using one of these, so I wasn't sure if it would work, but it did. I was able to get the villagers back to my base safely and without any problems. Then after working through the night to get the villagers back, I decided to get the wool from my sheep farm so I could make the beds and decided it was time to slay out my cows. With looting free, this gave me enough food to last me probably 300 days. Maybe a bit of an over exaggeration, but it feels like I have more than enough now. So with that being said, I crafted some beds and begin to make it feel like home for the villagers. I tossed them some food in hopes it would breed, so I decided to leave them alone and build something that is long overdue a carrot farm. So day 77 is where construction began and I continued to build this right the way through to day 80. A carrot farm wouldn't be a carrot farm, well, without carrots. So I decided to set up a crop nano farm and use up all the bone meal that I owned to get as many carrots as I could. I also started a pumpkin farm so I could craft more jack-o'-lanterns. This was for lighting the farm up. Between days 81 and 83, I spent more time in the caves trying to get mass amounts of resources. I needed iron more than anything, so that was what my goal was with caving, to get as much iron as possible. On day 84, I spent some time setting up my farm for vines, jungle trees, and even bamboo. I also put down some more beds for the villagers. All I did on day 85 was bone meal as many carrots as possible and try to fill the farm up. On the next day, any remaining carrots I had left I gave to the farmer villagers to see if we could get some more villagers willing to breed. Day 87, I decided it was time. With a looting free sword at my disposal, I needed to get wither heads desperately. That's if I wanted to defeat the wither before the 100 days is over. It didn't take me too long to get my first wither head, but the other two, well, that's another story. I spent day 87 right the way through to day 91 in the nether just going for wither skulls. Oh yeah, I almost died in the process. This was a very close call. Then on day 91, I got my third and final wither skull. As you can tell by me shaking my mouse, I was so excited that I got all the skulls. When I got home, I put these skulls on display. At least I know where they are now when I'm ready to fight the wither. Day 92, it was time. I had this secret project in mind for a while. Are you ready? Let's get to work on the new hostile mob farm. After going AFK for a while to test the farm out, I was amazed with how much this thing produced. Even if I wanted to turn it into a creeper farm later down the line, I could do just that. Day 99, the wither fight preparation was well underway. I wanted to be prepared. This was the turning point for my world. If I lose this final battle, this would be all over. However, if I win, we get to try and attempt surviving 200 days. Imagine what we'd be able to achieve in that time. I grabbed the wither skulls, all the potions I brewed, and it was time to get a good night's rest. We have a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Day 100 is finally here, the big day. It was time to take on the wither, so I go straight down to diamond level so the wither can't do any damage to my base. I place the two skulls down, and then I drink my potions. It was time. I hesitated slightly on placing the last wither skull because I knew there was no going back. And then I did it. 
I place the skull and it was time to get some distance. I go back through the tunnel and begin taking the wither on from range. I knew once the wither was down to half health, it would come at me with some melee attacks. This was my opportunity to strike. The wither's health at this point is depleting so much faster than I expected. And within a matter of seconds, victory is mine. I could not believe my eyes when I saw that nether star on the floor. I was so happy this was all over. And with that being said, it's now the end of day 100. What a journey this has been. I have a lot that I want to achieve within 200 days on this world, so let me know if you'd like to see that in the future. I appreciate all the support that you guys leave on this video. It truly means a lot. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.